Have any of you World War II buffs ever seen the red tape over the British Supermarine Spitfire aircraft gun ports and wonder why those were even there? Well, that's what we are answering in today's episode. Hello, all you fresh minds of the cosmos. How are you all today? I am the Keeper of Knowledge, and with my adorable archives, we will take a crack at something that has always stumped me when it came to the British Supermarine Spitfire during the Second World War. Why the hell is the Spitfire's gun ports covered in this red fabric tape looking stuff? Well, even though it should be common sense, some information surprised me, as I didn't take it into consideration. But I think I should let the facts explain it for myself. Archives, you may begin. For the British Supermarine Spitfire, you may have noticed in some old wartime photographs, small red fabric or tape placed over the main gun ports of the Hawker Hurricane or the Supermarine Spitfire. Now normally this would make common sense, as you didn't want dirt or debris of any kind flying into the gun barrel while the fighter is rolling down a dirt runway or a grassy field at high speeds. So it can be argued that the tape over the gun port of the wings helped to keep debris out of the main gun barrel. However, you also have to think of temperature differences. Now beyond a certain point of elevation, the air gets colder, and as a result, metal begins to also get extremely cold, especially when moisture is thrown into the mix. This is the exact reason why World War II bomber gunners would be forced to wear heavy padded gloves to operate their machine guns against swarms of fighters, as it was to keep their hands from literally freezing to their guns. Now with the Spitfire, if it's at a higher elevation, and add the fact that it's going very fast through a cloud, that cold moist chilling air is going to start to freeze the gun barrels of the aircraft, causing the gun mechanisms to jam, and therefore not be good. No shooty shooty at German airplanes means more dead Londoners. You get it? Good. Now this problem wasn't too much of a big deal by 1940, as by October of 1938, well before the start of the war, the Royal Air Force or the RAF had installed hot air ducts from the rear of the wing mounted radiators towards the compartments of the gun and around the gun bays, trapping hot air in the wings of the plane. However, while this was mostly to prevent overheating of the cordite used in British ammunition, it allowed cold air to flow through the barrel unhindered, but it could still be cooled to the point of getting too cold to operate. So the British just slapped some red tape or fabric over it until the pilot fired, which would heat the barrel due to the gas of the exhaust and negate any cold barrel issues. Plus, it helped keep moisture out of the gun barrels, which could also aid in freezing the guns naturally. This was extremely helpful if a Spitfire was flying through clouds. If you took basic science classes in school, you would know clouds equal moisture. Therefore, moisture means freezing of the guns of the aircraft at higher elevations, which means clouds were trying to help the Nazis win the war. It's a joke, Alpha. However, that wasn't the only thing that the tape did to help out the beautiful Spitfire. Oh no. Did you also know it helped make the Spitfire perform well in upward lift? Because I sure didn't. In 1942, the US Army Air Force did special tests on British Supermarine Spitfires in the report titled, Measurements of the Flying Qualities of a Supermarine Spitfire VA Aircraft. In their test flights, they discovered that the Spitfire could continue flying in a partially stalled position with the gun ports covered. Tests done with the gun ports uncovered showed the fighter to violently shake and be unstable in high G vertical climbs upon an elevation deflection of 100 being reached. Violent buffering occurred as the aircraft became unstable and began to roll to the right due to lateral instability. This is because with the gun ports open, air is causing friction or turbulence at the entrance of the gun port, and it then moves over the top of the wings. With the gun ports covered, no friction is being created, as the wind naturally flows over the wing more freely, 
when at higher angles of climb. This is also backed up from a magazine article at the time from war correspondent Peter Maysfield and his 23rd of November 1939 article within the British magazine The Aeroplane. He stated that British pilots explained covering their gun ports, as he stated, quote, An interesting point is that, as the guns are completely housed in the wings, the gun ports in the leading edge are covered over with a strip of doped fabric so no holes are left. This makes quite a difference at the takeoff, on the climb, and the top speed as well. When the guns are fired, the fabric is shot through at once, it is stripped off and replaced by a new piece when the machine comes down. Which is a good transition into the final reason why the Spitfire and the Hawker Hurricane had red tape or fabric over their gun ports. As explained by Mr. Maysfield, once the plane fired a burst of bullets from its guns, the bullets would shoot through the fabric. This would have been an easy identification to RAF ground crews in Britain that the weapons on the plane had been fired and that the airplane needed to be rearmed before the next sortie. It would also help the ground crews identify which guns had fired and which ones might have jammed or malfunctioned. It does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that if three out of the four guns have holes through the fabric patches, then you would know that the gun that doesn't have a hole in it didn't fire and therefore there's something wrong with it. Then you could load the other guns and then inspect the one that didn't fire. It was also a way to maintain which planes had possibly been worked on and which ones still needed to be checked. Now of course they are not idiots, they would have a clipboard and a roster to go by which planes were serviced or not as all chief mechanics had to initial forms showing that they and their crews worked on the aircraft and it's up to spec. But it was a still good visual indicator that a plane might need to be checked and serviced if it wasn't already. Once the machine guns were armed, fixed and reloaded, a crew member would simply rip off the old patches and replace them with new ones. And who knew that duct tape's early grandfather was helping to defeat Nazism in Europe back in the war? Truly, duct tape is the superior of all adhesive strips of plastic. So take that, Adolf. <coughs> mm, sorry, Archives, I kind of got carried away there, I suppose. Oh, well, thank you, Archives. In any case, not much of a big historical topic but an interesting one I felt like sharing. Thank you all so much if you have watched all of this video. You are simply and truly awesome. All of my social media sites and public discord page is down below. Don't forget to like the video so YouTube can promote our content. It only takes a few seconds and also make sure to hit that bell notification button besides the subscribe button. Don't forget to subscribe as well if you wish to follow our content. If you want to help us become more independent from YouTube, then drop by our Patreon page. You don't have to donate if you don't want to, so don't worry, it's fully optional. And if you want your own personal maps of any world or even D&D maps, then check out my Twitter page down below and for commission prices. Thank you all for watching once again, and I hope you have a wonderful day or good night. Bye bye.